Pumpkins, fall colors, and apple cider, those are the things you think about when it's the middle of October. But some of us are getting a little bit of, a little bit of an unexpected winter. Harley Hunsaker is live on campus. Harley, how can we prepare for the unexpected arrival of winter? Yes, thanks, Blake. It feels like fall just got here, but there is so much snow in the mountains. Some people have had time to prepare for the snow and others haven't. But what does preparation look like and is it even necessary? I mean, it is only mid-October. By the looks of it, fall has fallen right into place. Friends can hang outside with only a light jacket, but winter might come and clean up fall sooner than we think. I sat down to chat with a family who had a winter wonderland in their own backyard. It snowed today. It snowed 11 inches, causing trees to collapse. Since the snow came really early, there's still leaves on the trees. If they weren't strong enough, they snapped. So the power went out too? The power was broken and it didn't stay on. And the Frotchums learned the hard way that prepping your garden for winter is necessary. Just smash, bent in half, like flat. Even though a winter storm has yet to hit Provo, I asked BYU students if they are looking forward to it. Not a fan. Not a fan. And it seems like fall is never long enough. It feels like fall is only like, honestly, like two weeks this season. I asked another student how they prepare for winter. Um, I know not to drive my wife's car because her tires are pretty bald. <laughs> We're going to drive my truck. Tires are something you have to think about when it snows. But is it too early? Well, anytime after October 15th, we can start putting the studded snow tires on. That's Jonathan Gimlin, and he's worked with tires for eight years. I had him explain to me the difference between snow tires and regular tires. With lots of siping. Um, siping is actually all the little tiny cuts that are in the tire, um, and that's going to create the better traction. Gimlin says that if you spend a lot of time in the mountains, your car needs snow tires. $6.39. So whatever winter prep looks like for you, whether that's putting on your snow tires or prepping your garden, maybe consider doing it a little earlier this year. Reporting live in Provo, I'm Harley Huntsaker. Guess it's time to start pulling out those winter coats. Thanks, Harley. Right now in Scotland, prominent leaders discuss their hopeful contributions to combat the climate crisis. Harley Hunsaker looks at what has been proposed on both a global, national, and local scale to fight the dreaded effects of climate change. Harley? Yes, that's right. The 2021 Climate Change Conference is being held right now in Scotland. A lot of big names are making commitments to help reduce the effects of global warming. But that's in Scotland. We're in Provo. So what is the city of Provo doing and what can we do to help limit the effects of climate change? Leaders cheer for a brighter future. Let this be the moment that we answer history's call. But the serious faces reflect the grim nature of the conference. We are digging our own graves. Experts say COP26 may be the world's last best chance to address the climate crisis. But people everywhere are tackling it, including right here in Provo. Well, we advised uh, the, the mayor and the city council on how to uh, keep the air clean and the water pure in Provo. I talked with the Provo Mayor's Sustainability Advisor, Donald Jarvis. You name it, we grow it. <laughs> about Provo's role in all this. We have actually got the city council to uh, mandate that by 2030, 60% uh, of our electricity will come from renewable sources. That will include the help from an all-electric city hall, which is expected to be built by June 2022. Another way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions is by using a yard waste only garbage can so that the yard waste can be composted. Jarvis thinks only about half of Provo citizens use any type of recycling can, so that's something you can do. Provo also planted 1,000 trees in two years, but does any of this actually help? It's, it's kind of like Parenthood, nothing ever you, ever you do is ever enough. I think our, our, our city of Provo sets a good example for other cities in the region. And Provo is helping the nation. To show that our climate commitment is action, not words. The White House set to launch a long-term climate strategy to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, but you can help now. Another thing you can do to reduce carbon emissions is ride a bike. And although I am not very good at it, who knows? Maybe it's something I'll pick up. Reporting for Universe Live in Provo, I'm Harley Huntsaker. Thanks, Harley.